Welcome to Biocomputational Max. I've talked through several previous uh, segments about uh, COVID, the challenges for biocomputation that it presents. And then I've transitioned to some of the tools that uh, can help to uh, study it in um, systems that are um, reproducing human physiology in a dish. And now I want to talk about uh, how these microphysiological systems um, are suitable as workflow platforms for both pharmaceutical industry and CROs to improve uh, development of the drugs. So um, this is um, uh, an image that I talked about before. Some of the examples of uh, microphysiological systems with uh, different uh, requirements in terms of uh, throughput or um, uh, use of use, uh, certain controllability. Um, the um, microfluidics is inherent in these uh, systems as it is in um, another area uh, that has revolutionized uh, oncology, uh, single cell sequencing, uh, specifically transcriptomics, abbreviated here as SCRNA-seq. So um, uh, these uh, platforms are um, invaluable for um, uh, both cultivation and then downstream analysis of complex disease models. Uh, um, we are uh, all um, at risk for COVID, but um, other uh, challenging disease models are uh, endemic. So uh, we need to address them and do this uh, with safety. So um, that's another area uh, where uh, testing uh, would be desired. Uh, these uh, complex therapies cannot be tested uh, uh, in the systems that are uh, uh, too reductionist, that do not capture the essence. So um, I wanted to show you some specific systems from um, uh, Tissues, uh, which is a German company that has uh, built some absolutely uh, wonderful systems. And they scale very favorably from this uh, um, uh, uh, configuration which is suitable for uh, laboratories or uh, um, uh, primarily uh, um, of, of interest, I think, uh, to large-scale application is adoption by uh, contract research organizations. So um, that uh, these tools and the assays that can be run with them with this higher physiological significance can be made available to uh, a large number of pharmaceutical companies that are the customers of these CROs. So here, what I'm showing are the um, starter tools for um, uh, such a, a modest scale system. So as you can see, there are some uh, pneumatic connectors, a uh, touch screen, uh, which allows control of uh, uh, different chips. And here you can see on a sleeve of four, uh, um, uh, uh, that's the configuration uh, uh, here. Um, uh, these uh, chips are held in a, um, a thermostated environment and they have uh, on-chip uh, valving. So um, the, the valving is controlled uh, through these pneumatic lines and the tissue can be uh, dispensed uh, through these ports, which can then be uh, subsequently sealed. So this can allow um, very uh, uh, complex uh, tissue types to be interrogated uh, not only um, spheroids or organoids, um, and, you know, clumps of uh, three-dimensional tissue that are constructed from the bottom up, but also um, a, a kind of a, a, a top-down approach where um, tissue uh, uh, from patients is uh, um, diced and uh, uh, diced fresh in small uh, pieces, including stroma of the, let's say, tumor. And uh, those uh, tissues can be housed here. This is also very important for uh, complex toxicology studies, as I was showing in the previous uh, slide. Um, um, neurotoxic toxic effects are um, a very challenging factor, and uh, um, drugs uh, may be metabolized in the liver before they show neurotoxic effects, or they may be uh, immunotherapies. Uh, that, that have this challenging effect, and they may need to be tested for the ability to cross the blood-brain barrier. So um, all of these uh, models can be simulated within these chips. 
but they may require uh, different chips. The essence of the chips is that there are uh, um, uh, ports uh, for uh, uh, dispensing tissue or certain reagents. And this can be done with automation. And there, uh, there is microfluidic, uh, my microfluidic channels uh, underlying uh, um, system. So um, this uh, kind of schematic translates to a few examples as shown here. Um, so there are, there are human mimics uh, chips uh, two, three, or three plus, uh, four, and some others. Uh, these uh, chips have uh, uh, multiple uh, uh, ports. So these two, as you saw from the schematic, uh, have um, two uh, kind of uh, organs each and that can be uh, connected. Uh, human uh, 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 mimic chips three uh, have a three a port configuration for um, additional um, sequencing of uh, different tissues. It could be uh, liver, kidney, and then some other organ type. And as you can see, um, the uh, top uh, access ports vary in uh, design. So this is to give user more flexibility. And uh, also the company is um, uh, able to do rapid prototyping to uh, customize this if necessary. And as I mentioned previously, um, the chips are already incorporated as a standard uh, technology on these chips, which operate uh, for very extended periods of time, uh, enabling growth of uh, 3D cultures bottom up, for example, um, from uh, just a few uh, uh, induced pluripotent stem cells or uh, um, primary cells within these chambers. A uh, human MIG-4 uh, combines uh, this uh, uh, configuration of human MIG-2 into single uh, flow uh, uh, line. So that gives even more uh, um, ability to have uh, sequencing of different organs or to study um, membrane uh, systems such as the uh, uh, gastrointestinal tract or the blood brain barrier. Uh, there are also uh, humimic XX and XY um, for the study of um, certain reproductive functions and more comprehensive uh, human physiology of uh, men and women. And um, um, this is, or women and men, uh, uh, this is um, a, a much more comprehensive uh, platform and it's uh, um, uh, nearly finished. But um, as I was mentioning, there are many other uh, um, options that could be uh, made based on the requirements of uh, the customers. Uh, and lastly, uh, we uh, uh, also um, uh, want to point out these uh, uh, um, follow-up steps, uh, the scalability um, uh, with uh, the auto lab, uh, basically taking that uh, prototype uh, uh, pumping system and putting it into an entire enclosure uh, that has um, robotics for uh, uh, um, liquid dispensing and they're able to um, uh, work in um, higher, significantly higher throughput with automation uh, on, on these uh, um, chips. And it's an extremely valuable um, aspect uh, for integrating this workflow and scaling it up to um, uh, both change media, which can be a huge burden for um, stem cells, um, as well as to uh, do periodic sampling of the uh, supernatant of the cells. And uh, here is a, a picture of uh, multiple auto labs side by side. So this is a um, vision of the entire uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, tissues auto plant uh, with uh, multiple lines of these uh, um, uh, 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 chips, perhaps serving different uh, disease areas. And lastly, I wanted to point out about uh, um, integration of some of these solutions. Um, um, one of these solutions that I mentioned are um, uh, induced pluripotent stem cells that can be um, used to grow into organoids and uh, differentiated into um, various stem cells, uh, various cell types. 
uh, they give uh, very clean uh, cultures. So this is a, a highly controllable um, uh, uh, set of uh, cell lines. There are at least seven that are available from uh, tissues at this time. And uh, you can reach out to us or directly to tissues to um, uh, talk about um, these cell lines. But um, there are others that um, uh, may um, be integrated. Uh, one of the very uh, uh, popular uh, areas of need for um, these systems as toxicology, as was mentioned, which involves uh, both liver and kidney tox. So here um, is a, a company that specializes in uh, um, uh, hepatocytes. And specifically, they have absolutely first rate uh, um, human hepatocytes, including uh, fresh ones that were not cryogenically frozen. So uh, these are able to provide superior in vitro models because of their ability to uh, mimic in vitro environments. So this is an alternative to um, starting with induced pluripotent stem cells. And uh, we um, can advise based on specific application needs about various uh, options. And one more point uh, um, for uh, uh, integration of the hardware. There are also various consumables. Uh, for example, um, gels that stimulate extracellular matrix or um, tumor uh, um, and matrix and, uh, environment, which is uh, very important for um, metastasis. Um, so for example, here you can see a schematic uh, of a basement membrane uh, drawn up, which has uh, collagen, but also um, some, some uh, proteins. And these are uh, reproduced uh, uh, synthetically uh, and that uh, chemically controlled combination is uh, extremely valuable for um, stem cell differentiation. Uh, the use of matrigel uh, uh, is common, but um, troubled because of the uncontrollable presence of um, uh, growth factors in that medium, uh, in addition to the extreme price point of that um, mouse sarcoma line that's scraped uh, for production purposes. Here, it's um, highly controllable and also can be customized. Importantly, in addition to um, different uh, uh, laminin types or collagen or fibronectin content, it's possible to uh, fine tune uh, tissue based on uh, um, Young's modulus, basically the elasticity of the tissue. So um, uh, neural tissue uh, is uh, quite soft, uh, whereas uh, muscle tissue is um, very stiff. So um, these uh, um, can be uh, tested uh, for the chosen tissue type uh, uh, for the application uh, based on standard kits. And then it's possible to uh, um, do some uh, uh, fine tuning, both by mixing uh, known reagents as well as um, uh, working with uh, um, Manchester Biogels, which is the supplier of these systems. So, I hope I've given you a better sense of the um, hardware microphysiological systems that's involved in reproducing human in a dish, um, some of the uh, uh, um, consumable reagents, uh, which involve uh, inc include chips, but also uh, cells and gels. Thank you. See you next time on biocomputation or next.